Mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text is recorded in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture is breathed out by God. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever chucked a Bible? Now, I don't mean pumpkin, Chuck. I mean catapult. I mean, have you ever just thrown away a Bible? If you have, how did it make you feel? <coughs> Pastor J.R. Riggs tells this story. An older neighbor of ours recently came over to the house. He was carrying a large box. After a little small talk, I welcomed him inside. And I motioned to the box. Well, what's in the box? I asked. It's a box of old Bibles. My neighbor had recently retired. He was moving into a smaller home and cleaning out his possessions. And these Bibles had been in the family for a few generations. But he wasn't religious. Last year he told me that he had not been to church since before he served in Vietnam. He knew that I was a pastor and thought maybe I would want the Bibles. It was a kind gesture. Are you sure you don't want them? I asked. How about your kids? Would they want to keep them in the family? No, he said. My wife passed away. My kids aren't interested in them. They don't read the Bible. Neither do I. But if I throw them away, God might strike me dead. I almost laughed, but then realized he wasn't kidding. He honestly thought God would punish him if he threw away the Bibles. So the Bibles stayed with me. So did the conversation. It's an extreme example of many people's contradictory relationship with the Bible. They believe that there's something special about the good book, but they seldom, if ever, actually read it. There's a nasty prophecy of the book of Amos. Amos is the sheep herding prophet. I came across it while I was looking for something else because honestly I don't spend a whole lot of time in Amos, in the line of prophets, but the prophecy is telling. It is telling to our age. Amos 8, 11 through 12. The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land. Not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. Pastor Riggs' neighbor was staggering. Dead wife, fractured family, old war wounds. He held the answer in his hands, a box of Bibles, but he didn't know that that was the answer. Or perhaps even where to start looking. Many people today, indeed perhaps some of you, find yourself looking, looking for answers. All in a day when God's word, the Bible, is more easily present and available than it has ever been. Literally, the Bible at the touch of your fingertips. An app you can have on your phone for free. Olive Tree, Bible Gateway, Faith Life, Crossway, and many more. A whole box load of Bible apps for free. They just need to be installed and then actually read but, Pastor, isn't that why we come to church? To get the Bible read to us? Well, yeah, I suppose, but let me tell you a story. When I got to Sterling, Nebraska, I got a new doctor. And she had been working in the emergency room at Bryan Hospital, which is a hospital in Lincoln. But then she had gone into private practice, so she needed patients and I needed a new doctor. You know, in that first doctor visit, that was pretty routine, basic doctor stuff. Temp, okay. Heart rate, okay. Blood pressure, okay. Wait. <laughs> yeah, you really need to lose some weight. And she was quite adamant about it. In fact, she was quite naggy. Uh, although naggy wasn't the word that was in my mind, okay? <laughs> And I really wasn't liking my choice of the new doctor in that minute, you know? Yeah, doc, tell me something I don't know. I'll try. I'll try to lose some weight. 
I didn't see her for another year, which meant it was a really good year for me. Nothing went wrong that year. <laughs> or maybe I was just avoiding my doctor, I don't know. But when she walked into the room after a year, I just about did recognize her. She had put on at least 20 pounds, maybe more. And remember, she had been working as an emergency room doctor before. She was on her feet 12 to 14 hour days. Now she was in private practice, sitting with patients in patient rooms. A lot of sitting, a lot of paperwork, 20 pounds of it, in fact. I didn't say anything, obviously. But as our eyes met, we both knew. And the conversation at the end of the annual physical was, well, it was a little bit more compassionate, if nothing else. Blood pressure, okay. Temp, okay. Weight, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. It really is hard to lose weight, isn't it? I understand, said my new doctor. I like my doctor a whole lot more that second year. <laughs> Folks, I know. Nagging you to read the Bible isn't going to get you to read the Bible. And simply reading the Bible isn't going to cure everything that ails you anyway. You're still going to worry. You're still going to have problems. You're still going to have people in your life that bug you. You're still going to make mistakes. Reading the Bible will not make you into a better person instantly. It won't cure the you that is you. So why do it? Why read the Bible? Mother comes home from work. She's tired. She picked up the kids from after school care. They're hungry, obviously. Supper gets made quickly. Dishes get cleaned. Homework gets done. Well, sort of. Time to crash. Time for a little prime time. Time for a little mommy time, a little me time. But Ashley wants to talk. You know, Ashley needs to talk. She's 10. The other girls are not being nice. Indeed, the other girls in her class at school are being kind of mean. And Ashley just doesn't understand. And she's crying softly. The mom is there. The mom is. Oh, so tired, but mom is there, talking, listening, loving, taking the time for Ashley. Why? Because that's what mothers do. Our Heavenly Father is here, in this book, through these words. Talking, listening, loving, and yeah, sometimes chastening, rebuking, Encouraging. Because whether it is mom talking or dad talking or our Heavenly Father talking, sometimes Ashley needs a little bit more than simply, hey, everything will be okay. You know, that bright, sunny, positive thinking stuff we hear so much about. All right. Sometimes Ashley needs to be taught that people are people and people are sometimes mean. And that is what God does for us through his word, through the Bible. He teaches us that he is a loving father. He teaches us that we are his rebellious children. And then he teaches us how to live with those other rebellious children in our class, in our life. Those children which sometimes can be kind of mean. The Apostle Paul puts it like this to the young pastor Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So do you feel complete? Do you feel like you have everything you need? Do you feel like you are totally equipped to go out into the world tomorrow, on Monday morning, and deal with those mean kids at work? Are you already all equipped to do all the good works that God has in store for you to do this next week? Or do you need a little daddy time? A little time with God and God's word. Now let's go back to that verse once more because this is important. And this time we're going to just look at the first half. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is breathed out by God. 
All scripture is breathed out by God. Everybody take a deep breath. Okay, we just sucked all the oxygen out of the room. Okay? From this expression, from this verse, breathe out, we get our understanding of the inspiration of Holy Scripture. That every word in the Bible comes from the mouth of God. That this is the first and the foremost way that God talks to us each and every day. Now let's add to that 2 Peter 1.21. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So what does inspiration really mean? God breathed through the Holy Spirit. God breathed through the Holy Spirit, but men spoke as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Men, the human authors that God used to write the Bible, were actually speaking the words of the Holy Spirit. They spoke from God. Now, I want you to picture in your mind a man named Matthew. And he's at an ancient writing table because this is shortly after the days of Jesus. This man, Matthew, had spent three years with Jesus as one of Jesus' disciples. He listened carefully to Jesus' teachings, especially to Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Only Matthew has Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. He watched Jesus walk on water, cure lepers, raise the dead. He could bear to be with Jesus to watch him be crucified. But he was there when Jesus was risen from the dead. Jesus had changed his life. Amen? And now, Matthew wants others to know about this Jesus who changed his life. So, Matthew sits down at that writing table, and the Holy Spirit is there, right there with him. But Matthew is writing and being a good Jew. Matthew begins the story of Jesus in a way that the Jews of his day would understand. History, family, family history. Matthew 1, 1 through 2. The book of the genealogy. You excited now? Genealogy. Okay, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Oh, come on, Matthew. Genealogy. How many of you have a family genealogy? How many of you are going to spend Sunday afternoon reading it? <laughs> and Matthew goes on like this for 16 verses. The father of, the father of, and so forth. Until finally Matthew 1.16. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. Now, why did Matthew begin his story of Jesus in this way? Well, he knew Jesus. He knew Jesus' family. He also knew the Old Testament. Matthew knew the stories, the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the stories of David and Solomon and Isaiah. And Matthew, guided and directed by the Holy Spirit, carried along by the Holy Spirit, wanted to accurately tell the story of Jesus, the man who had changed his life. Yes, Matthew was inspired by the story of Jesus. Most people are inspired by the story of Jesus. But more importantly, Matthew was also inspired with a capital I by the Holy Spirit, making sure that the story of Jesus that Matthew wrote was accurate and true. God breathed all scripture, all 66 books, God breathed, including the parts we find Boring, including the parts we have a hard time agreeing with, including the parts of the Bible that we don't want to hear. In fact, perhaps for us, the ones that are most inspired are the parts of the Bible that we don't want to hear. God, breathing out his word, his light, his life. Remember Adam? Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed the man, Adam, of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living creature. When God breathes out life, 
happens. God breathing gives life. God breathing into Adam, into man, gives life. God breathing through his word, the Bible, gives life. And every page of the Bible points us both to the giver of life and the life he has given, which is his son, Jesus. And that's the primary reason to read the Bible. Because in the Bible, we find Jesus. And in Jesus, there is life. Last week, I shared with you my vision for our congregation. It's simple. It's eight words. Please say it out loud with me. Christ centered, Bible based, family focused, mission minded. Now, folks, they are in that order for a reason. All right? We can't get confused and make it about families without making it first about Jesus. We can't make it about missions that happens or service or things like that without first making it about Jesus. Everything ends and begins with Jesus. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. But we also can't simply talk about the Jesus that we want to talk about. We actually have to talk about the real Jesus, which is the Jesus of the Bible. Because you already know what happens when a church or an entire denomination disconnects from its understanding of Jesus that is the Jesus that we find in the pages of the Bible. So in order to be truly Christ-centered, we also have to be Bible-based. So, from time to time, I'm probably going to nag a little bit about reading the Bible, and hopefully, like my doctor, I'll figure out a way to be nagful in a less, less nagful way. Does that make any sense at all? Okay, you know what I mean. So here's the nag. All right, here's the nag. In a few weeks, at the beginning of Advent, uh, next month we're going to be asking the pastor. You saw that in your bulletin? Okay. I already got two of the weeks filled in already. So, um, But starting in Advent, I'm going to start preaching through Luke, the Gospel of Luke. Luke, by the way, is often called the most beautiful story ever written. Out of all stories ever written in every language, Luke is described as the most beautiful story ever written. And as I preach through Luke, I'm going to encourage you to be reading through the Gospel of Luke. I don't know what happened to my son. At home, during the week, would be good. But if you want to do that in church, if you want to come here and actually read scripture, you can do that by picking up the Bible in the pew, or you can get one of those fancy Bible apps. So now, I'm giving you permission to have your phone on stun. Some of you are going, oh, is it on stun, right? Have a Bible app, and actually be reading along with me while I preach through the Gospel of Luke. And some of you are going, wait a minute. That's not really Lutheran, is it? Lutherans reading the Bible while they're in church? That just doesn't sound right, does it? Folks, that is incredibly Lutheran, as in a Dr. Martin Luther kind of Lutheran that you can ever dream of. Luther, at the risk of life and limb, literally translated the Bible into German so that his people could be reading the Bible to <coughs> him. Pastor reading the Bible to the people, people reading the Bible and sharing what they read with the pastor. Ashley comes home from school. She needs to talk. Mom is tired. In fact, mom is so tired that mom is asleep. Mom is crashed on the couch. So what can Ashley do? Well, she can always talk to her Heavenly Father. All she has to do is find that box of Bible stored in the garage, open the book, hear God breathing, listen to God speaking, hear the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name.